this shorter rig works. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this kind of range of motion. We want from all the way down, arms all the way down, to moving up, moving up, all the way to the top. Now the purpose of this view is we get something from every angle so we can be sure there's no cheating. All right, let's get back to the very beginning. All right, so what makes this up? So what we're mainly interested in are these bones in the chest. Let's move our hands out of the way so we can see what's going on here. So there's these two yellow bones at the base of her breasts. There's this red bone, which pretty much copies her clavicle. This is her actual clavicle bone. This is her scapula con uh, control, I suppose. It copies the rotation of the clavicle, more or less. And this is the scapula deformer bone. It's just a um, child of that red bone. And it just goes wherever the red bone tells it. To a lesser extent, but still to some extent, this bone right here is in her shoulder. It is directly a child of the clavicle, and it is the parent of the bone in her upper arm. There's a little bit of uh, weirdness there we'll get to in a second. They're oriented a bit differently just so that the twisting of her upper arm is correct, but basically this is going to copy the rotation of that clavicle as well. So let's start with a bone at the bottom of her breast. So as the clavicle moves, rotates up and down, so does the bottom of her breast move as it moves forward and back. So the uh, nipple of her breast also rotates. We're going to see why that is here in a second. So let's just take a look. So there's a stretch to constraint. That is so that this bone will stretch to that bone there that copies the clavicle. There is a translation as the clavicle rotates on its X. So this one moves on its Y. So its Y axis is up and down. That's the, that's the movement we were talking about just a little bit ago. You can see the bottom of it moving up and down as the clavicle rotates. Also as the clavicle rotates forward and back, so the breastbone rotates on its Y axis, which is basically the same axis because uh, the breastbone is pointing up in that direction. The final constraint, this is a far less important constraint, but basically as her sternum rotates on its Y axis in global world space, so this one, the breast moves and its X and Y axis. And basically all that's doing is making it that as her, as she tilts right and left, the breasts slide a little bit down toward, to follow gravity. Makes it look a little bit better when, uh, when she is in a sideways pose. Not as important, especially if you want to manually do that posing. So this bone that that breastbone stretches to, all it does is copy the rotation of the clavicle. Now it copies the rotation, but it only copies it with a 0.8 in that way. If you do a full copy of it, then it'll start doing some weird um, folding and intersecting of the mesh, and so you'll get some ugly clipping. So that is why it only copies it partly, or I should say, with partial strength. Clavicle itself, you only want to be able to rotate it, and so you kind of keep it constrained this way. It won't, uh, if somebody grabs it too far forward, you notice how it just stops, it doesn't move forward anymore. If I move it too far down, it doesn't go down too far down. So that's pretty important to make sure that it doesn't do something crazy. The back, the backward rotation constraint isn't set up right. It probably should stop about here, but um, I'll need to tweak that later. Okay, we're already half done. The shoulder bone, as the clavicle rotates on its X, this one rotates on its Z, and that's what I was saying earlier. Basically, this thing's Z is the same as this thing's X, and it's just for, uh, just for something to keep her upper arm from doing weird things. The other transformation is as the clavicle rotates on its X, this thing also rotates on its, or excuse me, moves on its Y, and so its Y is this way, and so what that does is just keep it from sticking too far out as the clavicle rotates up. Oops, let's do that correctly. Uh, and it's a very subtle effect. Uh, you may not need it depending on how you read your character, but I suspect it's going to be a useful thing no matter what because that muscle does bunch up as we do that. 
just about done. So back here, that's the scapula. The scapula more or less um, copies the rotation of her uh, clavicle, but with a couple minor differences. So let's take a look at those. So first of all, the rotation copies X and Z rotation only. That way, if the scapula is rotating this way, the clavicle doesn't go into her chest and start making things look pretty weird. We limit the rotation also of the X and Z. Just You can just uh, copy these values if you want for now. The influence isn't complete. This just also slows it down, stops uh, some bad um, mesh intersections and other discontinuities. So you never want to, as your as you move a bone that's copying that rotation further away, you, if it's not a child of it, you want to limit its rotation to it or it'll definitely mess up the mesh. Another thing is, as the clavicle rotates on its Z, again, that's forward and back, then this thing's location moves. So you can kind of, again, copy those values, but the general idea there is that if I keep its location constant, it looks it doesn't essentially rotate around, so this is kind of a cheat since this is not actually a child of the clavicle and actually shouldn't be, but it needs to sort of act like the child of the clavicle in a, a little bit, then that actually causes it to kind of pull around or kind of push back and um, do some natural movements there. The final thing, dun dun dun, dun as the clavicle rotates on its X, so that's as it's going up and down. Hey, clavicle, there we go as it's rotating on its X, so this one moves, I believe that was correct. Yeah, this one moves on its Z axis, and its Z is up and down. So again, this is because it's not a child, and shouldn't be a child, but does want to sort of act like a child in some ways, that um, gives it that. So as the clavicle moves up and down, notice the scapula is moving up and down faster. And so that gives it a nice, um, gives it a nice look and feel. All right, that is everything. That covers all the bones you need to understand to set up your chest rig just like this. I'll give it a real quick spin around so you can kind of get a sense of where these things are in space. They are about where you'd expect. This is about where the scapula is. This is exactly where the clavicle is. This is exactly where the sh ball of the shoulder is. This uh, breast stretch, really, in theory, you would have the breast stretch to the clavicle itself, but then it gets too much. This is sort of just a way of reducing the of that. And uh, that should do it. So let's take a look one more time at what that looks like when we uh, animate it. Anyway. As I'm looking at her shoulder from behind in the lower right portal, I don't like how slowly her left shoulder came along. Let's go back and look. See her right shoulder comes up rather quickly, the left shoulder is still down a bit. Uh, that's probably fine. People don't do things in perfect symmetry. Alright. Well that's it. Thanks for watching. Enjoy YouTube.